Hello everyone, this is Mitch and welcome to episode 11 of our tutorial-ish Let's Play series. And also welcome to the second part of our Dunion Foothold operation. So back to the Space Center, what have I done? Well, you can see over here, actually you can't, why can't you? There we go, alright. So I've docked some of the um, modules around Duna with the space station. I say modules, they're really um, ships, individual ships. But I've skipped one uh, so I could show it on camera, maybe a refresher of how to do that, how to do that around um, Duna. But uh, if you're not sure how to get there in the first place, if you have troubles, uh, you can always feel free to go uh, and look back on my tweaking orbits a capsule and rendezvous maneuvers and that type of stuff but I'm still gonna show at least one for this mission and then we're gonna go ahead and drop down to the surface of Duna to gather uh, science from the surface and plant a flag the first time for this mission to get our science lab going and get this mission you know to start to pay off so we're gonna go straight ahead tracking station we are here, we are around Duna, and what's left to dock with the station is the actual landing module. This might be a little tricky because, as I said, the landing module... Well, I'm not sure if I said it, but anyways, you might have noticed, the landing module has only four of the smallest antennas. Antennae, whatever. Um, and basically it gets terrible signal. It should be enough. Yeah, it's getting probably just as much as the uh, space station currently. Alright, so we're good. Because technically this is only um, meant uh, to get signal for a probe core for SAS. Because hopefully we're sending down scientists in that lander and we don't need a pilot because the probe core can fit in the role. But right now it's not crewed, not at all. So it's not ideal. If we lose signal, we lose control. So hopefully we'll be fine, but we'll see. So let's go there and let's start the first part through this maneuver. So right now it's pretty much on the same orbit as the station, but it's not anywhere close to it. In fact, set as target, current distance is 700 kilometers. And we're not getting really much closer. So what we're going to need to do is to actually change our orbit. Um, right now, the station is ahead of us. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to lower our orbit underneath that of the station. So the station is orbiting at, well, pretty much the same the same height, which is a hundred kilometers. So we're gonna drop below that. Now we can't go very much below that because otherwise we risk hitting the atmosphere. But we can go at least 20 kilometers, I think. Let's go with 15 because that's also a source of distance between crafts. So there we go. That's 15 at periapsis and we're gonna lower our apoapsis. So you can already see uh, we're going to close in on the station just by doing that. It's going to be very slow, but it's going to work. Hopefully, I'm not going to make you watch the whole catching up to process. But I'm going to go, I'm going to show you how to, um, you know, get there, get closer to it. So we're time warping to periapsis. We're going to also lower our apoapsis so that this process is faster and coming on to periapsis we're gonna slow down to turn the ship around because we also want to slow down all right turning 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 it's not the fastest ship so hopefully everything goes well the nice part is that as, as you can see we've got some delta v left which means that we might be able to save some fuel to refuel well maybe the lander or anything really so we might be able to make maybe one more drop or uh, maybe go to Ike 
bring the uh, the tug to uh, refuel partway there since we're orbiting in the opposite direction. But we've got some extra fuel, potentially, anyway. So there we go. Apoaps is dropping. And there we go. Circular. And now it's just a matter of being patient and catching up to the station. So as you can see, the distance is lowering, lowering, lowering. It's kind of slow though. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the tracking station and it's actually going to let us time warp faster. So if we go there, we can see the station and we can see the lander. And we can actually time warp a hundred times, a thousand times, and watch. See it's getting closer and closer. And when we're almost right underneath it, we're gonna pop back in. There we go. And I think that's pretty much good enough. Maybe a bit more. But we have to remember that we're still going faster. So even though we're still a little bit behind, we should be able to um, to uh, make a very efficient maneuver to catch up to it. So there we are. So now there are a few options. But the best one probably at this point, like, can we see the distance? Yeah, 22 kilometers is an okay distance to make a maneuver for a direct approach. I would say. Normally I try to go for like less than 10 kilometers off, but still. So what we're going to do is we are going to drag our prograde marker onto our target marker. And to do that, we need to be on the opposite side and burn slightly. And there we go, it's going to move on top. As you can see, intersect markers. And the further we go, the more significant the movement of our program marker and the better. That will be about good enough for now. Now we'll wait for the approach and we will burn in the opposite direction to, uh, well not necessarily in the opposite direction, but we might want to slow down. So we're getting close, yeah, good enough. So now we're still going faster than the space station and we're actually ahead. So now what we're going to do is we're going to push the retrograde onto our target's retrograde. So to do that, we need to be actually pushing it. So we need to be on the other side, like the um, prograde marker, you pull it. So you go across your target's marker and then you burn. In this case, you go across, across the retrograde marker and you push it onto your target's retrograde. There we go, it's going away. Let's try to keep up and see where it's going. It's getting close. Good. And there we go. Now we're still kind of getting away from the target, so now that we've almost nullified the speed between uh, both uh, vehicles, we're going to go ahead and go again for the prograde to accelerate things. And we still want to pull it on top of the target marker. So it's a bit cumbersome, but it's working. Almost there. And boom. And see, the already the intersect is much better. Now, if we want to save fuel, we're going to time warp here to the next intersect. And we're going to fix... Oh my, it's moving quite, quite a lot. So we are actually going to fix it right away. Um... 
there we go. As you can see, the separation is lowering, which is what we want. One point eight kilometers. Let's some time go and fix our approach again as we get closer. I'm gonna still be pulling the prograin marker, getting ever closer for very little fuel. And now we're actually on collision course, or at least very close course. So we're gonna move straight away to retrograde, and we're gonna slow down. And I'm actually going to cheat-ish and time warp to cancel the torque. It's a nice little trick for uh, cumbersome vehicles, which take time to uh, accumulate momentum or speed, basically, rotational speed. All right, so we're getting close and wow, very nice. I didn't want it to be on the dark side of the planet, although it really isn't that bad, but it's probably better this way for video purposes. And I'm glad it just happened to be that way. So now we're getting closer. We're going to time warp a little bit until we're able to make out the station well enough to target a docking port. Getting there. Now there's a vehicle there already. Looks like we're gonna pass underneath, so I'll just keep time accelerating. And there we go, free docking port. Oh, this is tough, it's going kind of fast. Okay, let's cancel our speed. There we go, and target the docking port. And now all that's left is to switch to RCS and do the final approach. And we're already pretty much nicely placed. So hold on a second. Just for ease of use for controls, you might want to locate the north and rotate your ship so that the north is actually up on your nav ball like this. So you can see the north here. And if you place yourself there, the IJKL keys should respond, you know, appropriate to that direction you're seeing on the nav ball, which is going to make it a little easier to navigate. So right now we can actually point ourselves, align ourselves with the docking port basically is what I'm doing here. We want to be perpendicular with the station. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but it should work. And now, turn on RCS, press H to go forwards, and then I can even press J to go left, and oops, I to go further down, and now I should be almost perfectly aligned with the docking port. So now I can time warp again, see how it lines up. Now, don't go for extreme speeds, that's probably risky. You're gonna smash into your station or your target. That's never good. So yeah, we're not perfectly aligned. Making a little bit of a correction here. But it's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm actually gonna slow down. And line the ship up again. So turn off the RCS, don't need to spend monopropylent doing that. Gonna make myself level with the nav ball. And then turn it maybe even closer to the horizon like this. It's a little tricky to judge perfectly, but should be good. Turn RCS back on and start moving again.
Now it's wobbling a little bit and that's because the um, RCS is not perfectly lined up. So what you can do is press uh, the caps lock key to turn on precision mode. Then you can really make fine adjustments. It might look like I'm crooked, but it should be okay. Because of the magnets and everything, and because the markers are pretty much perfectly lined up, we should get a dock. Just waiting like this. Getting close, getting close. And I'm actually going to slow down. Not perfect. Which way do we need to go? We need to go a little bit more to the left. And forwards. And this time should be goal. There we go. That's it. Simple as that. Duking around... Duking, yeah. <laughs> Docking around Duna. Mixing up words and syllables. All right, so now we don't need this engine active. We don't want to risk turning it... Oops, well, actually... There we go. We don't want to risk turning it on by accident. And we're going to actually transfer that fuel into the remaining fuel tanks of the stations, of the station, which are part of the core of the station, because I don't want to fuel the... Uh, the station's uh, engines, I don't need them. So let's see here. Just toggling everything to make sure everything is the same across every vehicle. Now alt clicking every fuel tank. I just need to find the Rocomax. There we go. And I should be able to do out, but gonna enable crossfeed, that should work. There we go. And pump out from this one and it's going to spread it equally across uh, all four other tanks. I could speed up the process by using physics time warp. There we go. Which you can always use by using the uh, alt key and the period and comma keys. There we go. Even though you're in space. So that's it, we've got every module, every ship, everything docked with the station, and now all that's left is to perform science. We need to drop this lander to the surface of Duna. So what I might do actually is to transfer a tiny bit of fuel from one of these tanks into this one, just so that when I undock, I can put it on a different orbit from the station because obviously the lander is not going to dock with this huge module at the back. It's going to be in the way. So we're going to do it like that. Now... Oh yeah, and I don't know since which patch, but it's one of the most recent patches. Um, you can actually level up your crew in Mobile Processing Lab, so we're going to do that. There we go. So now Rose is actually level 4, and I think everyone is level 3, which has its perks. Alright, so going down to the surface, let's check, ah, so we're gonna need, well, it's not a requirement, but I would like to make sure that the station is actually um, above a hundred kilometers at its periapsis, but I will leave it like that for now. I can do that off camera. So we need a scientist in that cabin. I believe that all the scientists are in there. That's right. Uh, let's bring Donridge down so that he can get experience. And boom. Now he should be in the lander. Donridge, where are you? Crew report. Awesome. So we can actually start doing science right up here. So let's take a copy.
put it in the lab. Then let's take another copy and keep it. And let's start gathering experiments from right here, actually. Um, probably, yeah, that's not going to work. Although the barometer works in space, which it shouldn't, but whatever. So there we go. Put that in the lab. We can actually... Can we... Yeah, using the lab, we should be able to clean out all the experiments without having to uh, send the scientist outside. So we'll do that. There we go. One more. Keep it. And we're going to, like, I'm keeping extra experiments because I'm going to want to stick a copy into the um, return vehicle so we can get as much science as possible. And we might transmit a uh, thermometer scan just because uh, we've got a contract to get science from space. And, well, that's going to do it. And there we go. Science from space around Duna. Done. And now we can still take a copy. And we're going to move it later to uh, the... Uh, well, no, we're not going to move it later because it's going to take a slot in there. So, hold on. Which one contains experiments? This one, I believe. Yes. Okay. Can we... Yeah, clean experiments. Oh, it's actually kind of long compared to just sending a scientist around. And we can't even speed it up, apparently. Yeah, all right, no problem. It's okay. We've got the seconds to spare. Let's switch back to Donridge. Let's get him to grab the science from this goo container. Collect data, restore. Uh, we can actually even get him to do this. Keep, collect, and restore. We can collect the barometer. Can we collect the thermometer from here? No. Okay. Let's go around. There we go. And, wow, he's got it in his face. Take data. And we can actually fly straight away to the... Um, oh, and we can take an EVA report. To the uh, return vehicle and put it in there. Put all of it in there. Nice and gentle. And store all the experiments. Grab another EVA. Go back to the lender. And we're going to put a copy of the EVA into the lab. And we could even start the lab, actually. There we go. Grab. Well. You're not grabbing to the right thing, Donridge. There we go. Board. And now we can transfer that to the lab. And we can actually start processing the information. Start research. 
that's gonna consume well we're producing more electricity than we need so that's good so perform a spacewalk in orbit of duna good this is also good we can close this we can quick save to avoid any derp things wrecking our mission and we can actually already undock this thing because the lander is fully fueled it's in fact it's over fueled if we consider that there's this module in, with it too so we're gonna go ahead and undock right away and there we go and now we can turn on our CS SAS back off slowly back off faster and see we're plenty good for a monopropellant as well for when we return from the surface so turn off that and now we could pick a location to uh, land at but in this case it's not gonna matter because it's the first time we drop on the surface of Duna so all we're gonna do is try to drop on the bright side of Duna since we're not gonna be spending uh, an entire day there probably so we can say farewell to the station for now and we can actually drop our orbit slightly and then we'll be able to leave this module uh, uh, on our blah, blah, blah. can't can't do words anymore apparently yeah we'll be able to drop this module on a lower orbit so it's not in the way of the space station so let's actually go for retrograde I can't wait to ditch it too because it's kind of heavy and it's making the whole lander pretty slow at turning so there we go oh that's actually a lot of delta v for the lander okay well there we go and let's go for yeah 70 70 kilometers it's still above duna's atmosphere 71 and at periapsis will burn a little more so yeah maybe 45 units were a bit much but whatever i think we've got plenty of fuel and we're gonna gather plenty of science too so coming up on periapsis in a few minutes it's on the bright side let's point ourselves retrograde again we're gonna lower the apoapsis there we go well can time warp during movement so I'm gonna wait well we can but it's gonna stop the movement so there we go time warping to periapsis come on time warp faster <laughs> all right good enough we're loosely pointing ourselves retrograde let's start burning as well and we could actually make the module suborbital to get rid of it permanently so I might actually do that since it's got so much Delta V yeah gonna be well within crash point all right now let's decouple it get the engines ready and actually let's move ourselves out of the way and we'll do that using RCS oops I'm still locked on to retrograde I was wondering why it was fighting me there we go and away we go and then prograde again we'll at least try to pick a spot 
that's going to be clearly in the sun. Ooh, there is, so yeah, as you can see, it's now a lot more mobile since we've ditched the interplanetary module. And let's make this above 50 kilometers because I believe that's the height of the atmosphere around Duna. I haven't even checked. There we go. So now on our next pass, I believe we're going to burn. Yeah, let's wait for periapsis. And then somewhere around the dark side, we're going to want to burn um, retrograde again so that we'll actually land on a bright part of the planet. Because if we burn right here, there's a good chance we'll actually drop there. At least if we try to do an efficient landing. Now also the lander has plenty of power, so we're going to retract the solar panels right away. Because we should be good for power for a while. There we go. Time warp still. Yeah, atmospheric flight above Duna. That's the debris from the lander, but still. So we're really skimming close to the upper layer of the atmosphere, but that's fine. The only thing that's less fine is that it's going to take a lot of time because we cannot time warp quite as fast. We could go for the tracking station and then time warp faster but just the loading time is probably gonna you know nullify the gain so maybe once we're past half of the night side we'll burn retrograde and that should send us into a nice sub orbital flight and then we can land pretty much strictly on parachutes which is great going to save a lot of fuel. So here we go, here we go. So it looks like we're going to be landing on some generic area. I mean, I don't see much features through the atmosphere across our path, but whatever the first landing, so we're guaranteed to get complete science for all the experiments. So we're getting up to a point where we can start thinking about burning retrograde. There we go, maybe time warp a little further. There we go, we can reach 50 with this altitude. Okay, good enough. So now we're going to burn ourselves a nicely suborbital. There we go, there we go. So I'll aim for maybe 10 kilometers or even 5 because Duna's atmosphere is really, really thin. And I don't want to end up flying super far. And there we go. And now we're just going to hold retrograde like this. And wait until we come down. Uh, we could probably burn a little bit more to make our descent a little faster. We've barely burnt any fuel. And the less horizontal our trajectory, the better. Well, not necessarily the better, but... All right, so coming down. I think 
we're going to land uh, on the noon side of the planet, or... Yeah, pretty much. Alright, so we're actually atmospheric right now. Doesn't look like it, but it is. So we can actually start gathering a few experiments. Oh, did I have another crew report? Well, it was probably in space, so that was fine. And we can gather goo from space as well. Well, not space, but the upper atmosphere. And let's get two, actually. And it's probably safe to even open this. Run this experiment. That one. The Science Junior. And the thermometer. There we go. And that's plenty for now. We'll get everything else from the surface. Once our scientist is down, he'll be able to transfer and restore all the experiments. And then maybe even on our way up, we can gather duplicates for our maximum science. So let's accelerate this because it's actually pretty slow descent. Oh, and one thing you might want to do, which I'm not sure I did, yeah, is to reduce the minimum pressure for parachutes to the minimum, because you really want them to open as early as possible, since, as I said, the atmosphere is so freaking thin, there, you know, you need the most time with the parachutes open to really, really benefit from the slowdown. And strangely enough, from the vehicle assembly building, you cannot lower the pressure uh, this low, so... That looks like it's all of them. Good. Very good. Let's re-accelerate our descent. It's really, really slow. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we've lost our all, all our antennas somehow. We've still got signal. Yeah, just barely. I'm very tempted to um, reload at this point, but since we still got signal, it should be fine. And furthermore, maybe the engineer will be able to repair them. Since they're not completely destroyed. We'll try it out, we'll try it out. Worst case scenario, we can send pilots down if it's really difficult, but it shouldn't be. I thought the uh, antennae would be protected from the airflow at this angle though, but eh. So right now you can see the drogue chutes are actually safe to deploy, so we're gonna put them on old basically because the atmosphere is still too thin but we're gonna still allow them to deploy as soon as possible at this point since it's safe to do so there we go it's actually safe to deploy the other chutes it says there are four where are the other two oh they're on the side There we go. And we can deploy the landing gear. And now we just need to be on our toes to uh, actually slow down the final uh, the final few meters because it's probably gonna not gonna slow us down below sorry below um, 12 meters per second. So we need to be careful. Still coming down. Speed this up a little bit. Two kilometers. Yeah. The chutes are now deploying. 
So it's actually pretty gentle. It's not quite 12 meters per second, but it's enough drag to keep us from crashing really hard. So let's still accelerate. 500 meters to go. Four. Three, two. Now I'm just going to fire the engines a little bit and try to get down to about 5 meters per second. Hopefully the surface is level enough. There we go. And done! And yeah, you want to really, really land at slow speeds because if the engines smash on the ground, you're in trouble. Like, you're in big, big, big trouble. So let's extend the ladder. We have made Dunion ground. Hooray! Landing on the surface of Duna, thank you. And now we're gonna gather all the experiments and reset them and then regather them again for copies. We can get the seismic data. And off you go, buddy. Now we're going to make you actually let go and walk there to collect that data. Restore it. And can you please put a copy in there? Yes. Store experiment. We're actually going to go... Oops. Oh no, he's going to fall. Alright, Donridge. Actually, I think you can jetpack on the surface of Duna. Whoa. Try not to be inside the ladder when you do. Yeah, gravity is light enough that you can do that. There we go. We're going to board. And we're actually going to... Are we going to transfer everything to... Actually, no, not quite yet. Let's EVA. Take the data. Let's switch back there, and now we're gonna transfer everything in there. There we go. Now we can switch back to Donridge and board. Have the extra copies in there because obviously if you try to uh, store the same experiments twice in the same container it's gonna destroy them and you don't want that. We want as many copies of experiments as possible. So there we go, Dunas Islands can somehow get a surface sample from the site. Um, we can actually store... wait... That's going to be tricky, isn't it? If I store the experiments... I suppose I should put them straight into the science container. If I can. Oh, can I? That's really difficult. I can't. Okay, so that's fine. We're gonna oh, extend that ladder. Extend. Oops. Well, we've got a probe core for this, so extend this one. All right. Grab. Now we can go reset everything. Oops, he's sliding down somehow. Restore. Good. Um, log another copy of that. Log temperature. Observe this. Take the copy, collect it, reset it. Now we can go do the same on the other side. Whoops. And that's basically going to be it. I mean, we're going to be collecting as many copies, well, two copies of every 
experiments we can. I'm going to try to figure out um, how to get them into the container without destroying um, my upper atmosphere. But in the worst case scenario, it's not the worst because we're going to be dropping down here a few times. So I'm going to put a cut in here and we're going to be back when I try to dock back with the station. So see you in a moment. All right, and we're back. So apparently the science container is very well made and it won't even attempt to transfer duplicates of experiments and thus destroy them. So I managed to collect as much science as I could, I believe. And now we're going to be trying to go for the station. So I time warped uh, for it to be getting close. So we don't have to do as much waiting as we did previously. And we're going to go straight up and launch. So. There we go. We can pull those. Are we even going in the right direction? Is a perfectly fine question. No, we're not. We want to go this way. So, lesson learned for the future. Going east. And right now we're just going to burn a bunch upwards. Get out of the atmosphere. And we're going to try to go sideways as well. We want to make sure we're going... Um, well, we want to make sure that we're going to end up in orbit no matter what happens because if we're not in orbit, this thing crashes down and we're done. If we make it into orbit, at the very least we can send a tug to refuel it if it doesn't uh, make it back to the station. Doesn't look like it's going to be a problem though. I guess I did my homework correctly and this thing has plenty of delta V to get there. Hopefully. So we're now getting above the atmosphere. We're going to wait until we're there. And start burning again. Now I'm not sure I'm going to be able to repair the antennae, but it doesn't seem like it matters that much. Since we have a pretty strong uh, communications network, the... Uh, um, what's it called? Like the init the integrated antenna from the command module or from the probe, either way, uh, are enough to uh, maintain the ability to stabilize the lander without even a pilot. So that's good news. So good to know the antennae are entirely optional in case we cannot replace them. So we're getting close to there. And actually start burning again. Even though we're ahead. Just to make sure we have the time to accelerate before we fall back down into the atmosphere. We can even target this station as well. Looks like we'll be making 60 kilometers, so we'll wait some more, try to be efficient, because this thing has just about just enough delta V. Alright, we made space, let's time warp. Hopefully the station is not catching up with us too fast, so we'll probably be in a good position to dock with it again. There we go, closing in on orbit. We might have to send a tug for a final few meters. 
sadly. Although... I say that, but... Alright, good. We've got periapsis. Apoapsis. There we go. Good enough for... Apoapsis. And yeah, we've got plenty of fuel to get this thing back docked with the station. So let's time warp again. And we'll get into an orbit above the station because it's behind us currently. I didn't think it would, uh, it would be this easy. So I gave myself maybe a bit too much room and now the station is behind us, but that's okay. So getting to Apoapsis, and now we'll accelerate again and make sure we're above the station. Oh, much more maneuverable now that it both both lost its interplanetary stage and burnt most of it, most of its fuel. There we go, and as we can see, there we go. We'll have a intersect in 55 minutes of real game time at 7 kilometers, and now all we need to do is dock again. But since I've shown you the process once with this very vehicle, I am going to end the episode here. So if that helped you, if you've enjoyed, please like, subscribe, leave comments and feedback in the section below, please. I enjoy comments and feedback. So please do so if you can. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.